That's right, they banned the sale of spider ball python. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. I certainly don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I am going to tell you that I'm going to be ranting a little bit today about something that came up over the last little bit that just really infuriates me. And let me start by saying it's going to be about this particular snake. Some of you may already know what this is about. This is actually what they call a spider ball python. It's actually an incomplete dominant animal, meaning that it doesn't have a super form, but when you breed it to a normal ball python per se, on average about half the babies come out looking like a spider. Let me start by giving you a little history on the spider ball python. In actuality, a guy named Tyrone from Cal Zoo in California actually imported an animal that looked something like this. It was an adult male and he offered it for sale. I think it was about $1,500 is what he was asking for. This is way back in the late 90s and Lindy from Freedom Breeder ended up buying that animal after it sat at Tyrone's place for quite some time. Lindy then did a partnership with Kevin McCurley from Nerd, who is a massive ball python breeder and one of the founders of the ball python trade. And Kevin bred that animal and turned out to be incomplete dominant. When he bred it to a normal, about half the babies came out spider. Now, the whole reason it was named spider or is named spider now is actually because Kevin called it a spider web ball python because he felt like the patterning almost looked like a spider web. Now, this was really unbelievable back in the day because, again, there was only a couple mutations of ball pythons and the ball python industry was just starting to take off and with the addition of the very first incomplete dominant animal it really changed the game and I think I was the second person to buy one of these guys I paid $25,000. Now this animal here happens to be a mutation of a handful of things. This is actually a spider red stripe super stripe. So there's a lot of genes in it. But one of the things that comes along with the spider gene, and we've really known about this from the very start when Kevin started producing these guys, is that they have somewhat of a little bit of a neurological problem. Do you see this animal? Its head doesn't move quite right, has a little bit of a tilt. Some are worse than others. And it's basically called a spider wobble. And this spinner here, which is the spider pinstripe, is a perfect example. It's got a little bit more of a shaky head thing going on when it moves it does corkscrew a little bit but nothing too dramatic I have personally worked for a long time to kind of get as much of the wobble out now it is linked to the gene so there's no way you're gonna separate it when you produce a spider there is a neurological glitch called a wobble and you're never gonna totally get rid of it but what I found is if you breed animals that have the least amount of wobble typically their offspring come out with the least amount of wobble as well now I totally understand the people that say like listen I don't want to breed anything that has some kind of a genetic defect. The wobble with the spider is a genetic defect. The thing is, is that there's a lot of genetic defects when you start breeding animals. Hey, look at anyone that is into dogs or cats for that instance, understand that a lot of the dog breeds and cat breeds have genetic defaults that go along with them. The thing is why I'm starting this whole rant is that the powers that be over in the UK, and I hear some other European countries are soon to follow, basically ban the sale of spider ball pythons. That's right. They ban the sale of spider ball pythons and all combinations thereof. So they decided that they were going to kind of play the biggest power and say, we can take away your right to choose whether you ever want one of these absolutely gorgeous animals in your life. Now, the reason I'm so upset about this is the fact that it's an extremely slippery slope when you start choosing what mutations and what you consider is a defect. Take, for instance, a scaleless Texas rat snake right here. Some people literally think that this is a defect that shouldn't be bred because it doesn't have scales. They basically say, hey, listen, the fact that it doesn't have scales means that it can't protect itself and it's an abomination and you shouldn't be able to breed it. My point is, is that who gets the right to decide that? You know, there are mutations in every type of animal. Again, not just reptiles, like I mentioned, dogs and cats and all kinds of other stuff that basically have defects that go along with it. There's a saying that says all recessives concentrate, which basically just means that when you are actually breeding for a phenotype or color phase or lack of scales, or whatever the case may be, sometimes there's other concentrated genes that are on those proteins for whatever allele that's causing that mutation. So my point is, is where do you draw the line and who should be able to make that decision of where you draw the line? Take, for instance, Ben and Jerry here. They're a two-headed snake. They are definitely an abomination. They are a mutant. They are a freak of nature, so to speak. And I'm sorry, I don't like to use that term, but the point 
is, yes, they are not normal. Does that mean that somehow they shouldn't be able to be kept? Should they be euthanized immediately? Because someone thinks like, oh my gosh, they shouldn't be alive. They're suffering. Those poor two heads are fighting each other. The best thing for that animal is to be euthanized. And that's where I get really upset because again, no one should decide what is right for you or your animals or anything like that as long as the animals are being cared for. It's not like the spider ball pythons are born and have some heinous thing that they can't actually thrive. The truth is, is that that mutation has thrived for over 25 years. It's been an incredible mutation. They raise up, they do well, they breed everything. So why would someone think that of all mutations, that is the one that you should ban and you should outlaw? Trust me guys, this is a slippery slope. Once this happens, what gets banned next? Is a piebald an abomination? Because it couldn't live in the wild. If this was out in the wild, that white would mean that a predator would have to attack it. So this should not be produced in captivity anymore and we should ban piebald ball pythons. I know I might be going a little extreme there, but my point is, is that what's next, right? Because we all know that there's a lot of mutations, whether it's in ball pythons, leopard geckos, corn snakes, whatever the case is, that have some anomalies. Take for instance, super cinnamons. They have a bulbous nose. Sometimes they even come out with kinks. Does that mean we should immediately ban cinnamon ball pythons? I don't know, guys. As you can see, I'm extremely passionate and somewhat upset about this decision. I don't like this. I think that this is a dangerous thing. I'd like to know from you guys down in the comment, what do you feel about it? Do you think that spiders should be banned because of the wobble? Do you think that other animals should be banned because they have defects? Or do you think that we should let people decide for themselves? Again, I'm not saying things that are obvious. I mean, if there's a mutation of a snake or something like that that obviously is lethal or really causes the animal to not thrive, absolutely we should police ourselves and we should decide not to produce those animals. We shouldn't have to be told by somebody to not produce these animals or that they can't be sold because what else? What if I sell a spider ball python in the UK? Do, do I go to jail? I don't even know what the ban means. I don't know who's enforcing it. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. The point is, is that we should really be policing ourselves as a hobby. We should be doing what's best for the animals, the hobby, the market, everything else when it comes to that. Take for instance this gecko here. This is actually a snow enigma. Now the enigma is kind of similar to the spider ball python. It's another animal that's an incomplete dominant and it also has a wobble issue to it. This animal is actually pretty good and we have a handful of enigmas that we just have in the collection that actually aren't too bad. But we made a decision not to breed the enigmas in the future. Again, I'm not saying that enigmas are terrible. I'm not saying that we should stop breeding them and I'm certainly not saying that we should ever ban enigmas because they are absolutely beautiful animals and like you can see with this one right here, it's not doing anything weird. It's not flipping around, but it does have a little bit of a head wobble and it's just something that we decided, hey, there's other mutations that are very similar to enigma. We'll just go ahead and work with them, things like white and yellows that make things that look almost the same. So why produce the enigma? Again, we decided on our own. We didn't have to be told by anyone to do it. We just decided, all right, we'll hang on to the ones that we have, but we just won't produce any more in the future. Another example of that would be something like Fetty Wap here, which is a hypo leatherback. Now, leatherback is a co-dominant mutation. When you breed two leatherbacks together, you actually get what is called a silky, which is basically like a scaleless bearded dragon. I know I just talked about the scaleless corn snakes and stuff like that and said, no, there's nothing wrong with them. Well, the truth is with scaleless bearded dragons or the silky bearded dragons, they do seem to be a little wonky. And what I mean by that is that they don't shed really well. They have some skin issues and so like that. And the truth be told, the majority of the hobby stopped breeding silkies. Now, some people still do, and I'm certainly not trying to go after anyone and say, you shouldn't breed silkies anymore. My point is, is that the hobby kind of policed itself and most people decided to stop breeding them because of their health issues. See, we don't need to have some powers that be that actually don't even know what they're talking about telling us what to breed and what not to breed. And again, I'm not talking about some heinous thing that is obviously a problem with the animal, but the truth is if we ever produce something that was like that, that was obviously a detriment to the animal, a detriment to the hobby, wouldn't the hobby kind of police itself in that sense too? And everyone would stop breeding them and maybe even the people that were breeding them would be looked at and kind of frowned upon? The albino corn snake or a melanistic corn snake, one of the first mutations really ever being sold in the pet trade to be totally honest with you. This animal was being sold way back before there was really a reptile hobby. It was just a handful of people that were mainly just trading back and forth and so on like that. And in the very beginning, mutations like albino, snow, striped corn, all kinds of mutations originally were considered to potentially be lethal because they were really weak. When you produced them, they didn't do well. And then generation after generation of outbreeding and getting new bloodline, now they're a mainstay staple. Again, I remember the first striped corns being produced and everyone thought that they were a 
lethal gene that couldn't be reproduced because when you bred striped corn to striped corn, all you would get is infertile eggs. Now you can breed striped corn to striped corn till the dogs come home. Now I'm not saying that you're gonna breed the wobble out of spider because I mentioned earlier in the vlog, you can't breed the wobble out of a spider, but that doesn't mean that you can't improve it and just kind of work on it. The fact is, is I think that this is kind of a lack of education. The people that are making these decisions don't really understand what they're even making the decisions on. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I read something that the IHS, which is the International Herpetological Society, was somewhat behind this or sponsored the idea or something like that, which really surprised me because those people know better than that. And I'm hoping that I'm wrong. I'm hoping it isn't the IHS behind something like this because they understand animals. And if they were educated enough to really understand what they were talking about, they would have never tried to ban the spider ball python because to me, I think that this is just kind of a prelude to start banning other animals. And we don't want that to happen. Again, this might just be over in the UK and maybe some certain other places in Europe, but hey, eventually it could come to here and could be all over the world. So we definitely want to make sure we're educating the powers that be to make them understand that, listen, you are literally making a decision that's going to affect people's livelihoods in a way that doesn't really help anything. And again, I am going to make this point again so that you are crystal clear on this. I am not saying that I am not in the best interest of the animal because I am. Because if there is something that I feel is bad for the animal, I am all for policing ourselves and saying, no more, we aren't breeding those animals. But in this case, I just don't think that that's the case. I don't see spiders being such an egregious mutation and this head wobble being such a horrible thing that we should ban them and not be allowed to sell them anymore. Again, where does it end? Today it's spider ball pythons. Maybe next week it's piebald ball pythons and maybe a year from now all color mutations are banned. Because someone thinks they're an abomination and feels for whatever reason that they shouldn't be reproduced. So where do we go from here? You know, I honestly don't even know the answer to that. And I do apologize to you guys, because you know, I like to keep the vlog happy, positive, upbeat, and I still feel that way. But when it comes to a situation like this, I'm pretty passionate about it. I've spent my entire life trying to disprove people's opinion of reptiles. And here, in our own hobby, we're all of a sudden starting to cherry pick an animal that yes, does have an issue, but is it such a bad issue that you would literally ban the animal? Why not just let, again, breeders make their own decision and people make their own decision. If people are educated on yes, spiders do have some wobble, but it doesn't really affect their life. As long as you're not buying an extreme wobble one, let people make their own decision. If they want them, they want them. If they don't want them, they don't want them. As for me, I love them. I am going to continue to work with them. I'm going to continue to breed them and be responsible about it all along the way. And if someone asks me, of course, I'm going to be completely transparent about the potential for wobble. And again, I don't want to upplay wobble. I don't want to downplay wobble. It is there. But in the 25 years that I've been working with them, I've never had one that has had a health issue because of it. Regardless, I got to ask you guys, what do we do? Let me know in the comments what you feel about this. What do you think our next steps are? What would you do? Because I'll be totally honest with you. I really haven't even wrapped my head around who's made this decision. Like who's the powers that be that actually says this is going to happen and how do they enforce it? I don't know. And I don't know if I should be concerned that there's going to be more animals coming down the pike. So again, down in the comments, let's have a conversation. I want to read about what you think about this, what you think the solution is, and if maybe you agree with it. And I'm completely fine having a conversation if you disagree with me and agree with this situation. I want to know. So there it is, guys. I'm going to go ahead and just end it and leave it there with you guys. I will be in the comment section all day reading and kind of replying back to you guys. So please, let me know what you guys think. Let's have a good conversation. Let's just kind of figure out what to do next and how to prevent any future damage to the hobby and so on like that. But again, I will listen to you if you think I'm wrong on this topic. I'm completely open to hearing your side of it, so go ahead in the comments. As for now, I'm just going to wish you guys an amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching this vlog. And tomorrow we'll be back to our positive old ways. Your guys' support means the world to me, and I truly love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here though? Can you smash that like button if you like this video, which I'm not sure if you'd like the video or not with the ranting that I did turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload the more positive and fun videos again go down those comments let's have a conversation people be kind to someone including being kind to me please I will see you guys tomorrow